Hello and welcome to today's video. This time I'm delighted to be on location. I'm at my friend Dorset Bob's here and uh, as you've seen in previous videos, Dorset Bob has got one of the, well, probably the finest vintage Badger book collection in existence. And he's kind of allowed me to step into his office and uh, film the whole lot. So without further ado, sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so starting off, we've got Supernatural Stories number one. Absolutely fantastic. Now, my friend Bob is actually in the room today, so feel free, Bob, if you want to chime in and give us any running commentary about some of these, um, please do. But we've got an awful lot to go through. But this is one of the, the very earliest John Spencers. Um, and in actual fact, that was the first one, actually, wasn't it? Or Out of This World came before the Supernatural Stories, almost like a um, like a prequel, I believe, wasn't it? I'm, uh, um, yes, I'm not yeah. sure, to be honest, but it was around that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah almost like a pilot issue. Yeah, and then it went into the normal, uh, more digest size rather than paperback, uh, Supernatural Stories. And uh, there is uh, number two. This is a Lionel Roberts. So we know the story. If you've watched these before, uh, these Badger videos, we know all about uh, the Reverend Lionel Fanthorpe and all his numerous uh, pseudonyms. And uh, there are many and varied in the... Uh, Badger World, this is number three. But this is, uh, while we're here, this is a, a real treat just to go through uh, Bob's collection because there are so many. And uh, it'd be a nice little uh, souvenir of this collection because uh, many of these I've never ever seen before. And uh, it's a great little record. My name is Satan, what a cover. <laughs> Voice of the drum. There's no sort of regular cover artist, is there, on these, Bob, that you know of? Not to begin with, no. No. Um, later on, uh, Fox did most of them. but uh, and, and they're clearly signed, actually, yeah, aren't yeah, they, yeah. those ones? Yeah. Golden Scarab. Just look at those spines as well. Nice and colourful. But these are very much John Spencer. There's no mention of Badger just yet. Yeah, this Until is, now. That's this it, is, yeah. Number this nine. is one of the tougher and more sought after of the run, The Devil's Dictionary. Right, uh, yeah. For some reason, uh, that well, is a, a, quite it, a tough book and a big book. It is the first one to have a badger on the front as well, um, but just just a scarcer one to find. I see bi-monthly of these. It's uh, ever so slightly thinner, this one. Number 10. Well, that's a nice jacket, isn't it? And that's a fox one there. Very, very nice. The Night Creatures. Have you read many of these, Bob, or is it more collected for the just the great cover art? Yes, it's a cover art thing. Yeah. I think once you've read one, you've, you've got a good of, sampling. You've got, got a good sampling. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the Fantasy of the Abominable Snowman. So this probably would have been published around the time of the Hammer one, wouldn't it? The uh, Abominable Snowman Hammer movie, possibly. Possibly. Flight of the Valkyries. It's a great one, isn't it, there as well? Very, very nice. Watches of the Forest. Guardians of the Tomb. He certainly churned them out, didn't he, old uh, fan thought? Yeah, he could write a book in less than an evening, I believe. <laughs> less than an evening. Less than it would take us to read it. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's absolutely nuts, isn't it? <laughs> Call of the Werewolf. That's great as well. Appeal to the werewolf collectors amongst us. The lycanthropists. Yes, the lycanthropists, yeah. A chalice of Cirque. 19. So you've, on this, like the supernatural and the science fiction, well, you've pretty much got them all by one, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Which we'll, we'll mention, yeah. We're, annoying but, one. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen copies out there, but... Yeah, we want to keep the quality up because these are so, so nice. They really are great. And we were saying beforehand that you just don't come across Badger books like you used to. No. Um, they, uh, they've they definitely, I mean, I cannot remember the last time I'd found one in the wild. It was, I don't know, years ago. Yeah, years certainly ago. in the 80s and 90s. You yeah. Know, if, if one were going around book hunting, just in general, second in bookshops, you'd usually see had. Two or three on the shelf, you know, yeah. especially if the shop liked science fiction and pulpy type fiction. Um, 
But of course, they did continue right through into the late 60s. So finding them in the 80s, they were only some of them 20 years old, so <laughs> or less. <laughs> That's so, true, of course, yeah. You know, in those yeah. terms, you should have seen them around. But no, they've all been snaffled up now, I think. And yeah. They're all, uh, in all in collections, yeah. yeah. I mean, this is just beautiful condition. I'm just, I just can't believe how nice it is. I mean, I'm imagining this was possibly from your that find of file copies. Yeah, effect, it know? was. These were the publisher's own copies. Absolutely. That never got read and just beautiful. Stayed in his flat. There's yeah. a little bit of kind of aging to them because the paper was yeah pretty cheap, and nasty. I'd, he didn't really keep them well. I mean, they weren't right. out of the light, as it were. No, no, and and you hear about that sometimes, don't you? Where um, uh, you know, someone's they just part of the furniture sort of thing and they don't yeah. really think about the long term no. sort of storage of them no. I've got to admit seeing because I've got so few of these maybe three maybe four in my collection seeing a run like this you really do get to appreciate them a bit more I mean that makes you think a creature from the Black Lagoon once yes, again that mid 50s sort of one they're using the influences of what might be in people's mind yes um, definitely yeah dark conflict a mummy one there as well. They were all the rage as well back then. Yeah, exactly. You were absolutely right. Yeah. They were tapping into the kind of popular film, you know, culture of the time. The genre the genre power, stuff, and, yeah. You know. Yeah. Now, this is a slight change in format here because we now very much, Badger Books is, is really the highlight. Yeah, it's very clearly Badger and um, they're much more like a standard, standard paperback mm. now, aren't they? Um, same sort of thing there. It's uh, still bi monthly and uh, almost like a digest with multiple stories in there. Mm. Probably half by fan thought. <laughs> or more. Or more, even, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Treeboar Thorpe, I mean, blimey. <laughs> what was he like, Treeboar Thorpe? That's a great one. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that cover before. What a great jacket. Beautiful, really, really nice. That I'd love to know what's happened to the original paintings. For yeah, these, you don't see them around. No, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a badger jacket ever. In fact, um, now you come to mention it, it's a nice one as well, isn't it? You've met Lionel Thanthorpe yourself, haven't mm. you? Um, I I've met him a couple of times, but I've never asked him, you know, did he keep copies of these himself? Mm. Um, he must, you would think he would have, wouldn't he? Mm. You know, if I was an author, there's no way I wouldn't keep a copy of at least one of my books. But I guess he wrote so many that, um, you know, potentially <laughs> even he might have run out of room, you know. And again, to him, they were his bread and butter. Yeah. They weren't doing anything special. I suppose it would have been like taking your work home, wouldn't it? You know? Yeah. Um, I know that a lot of authors sometimes save copies for their children if they have like three children. They yeah, have three copies. Oh, that makes sense. Shot. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, no, I never, never. Asked Apart from because we know that some of these came out as American editions, didn't they? Yes, um, Vega books. Vega, that's right. I, I, I have had a couple off you. Um, did um, did they come out in any other language that we know of, or maybe not officially? That's. That's a good question. I think the answer is no. Mm. Certainly when I acquired all the publisher's own copies, yeah, there were packages addressed in brown paper, you know, copies that had been put together as an order yeah. for places like Saudi Arabia, Finland, Norway. Right. Um, maybe like an English-speaking bookshop in those countries. Yes, maybe. yes. Yeah. But I've, do you know, I've never seen... Uh, foreign language. What no. I have seen, of course, mm. is that there are New Zealand and Australian variants with a different shilling yeah. prices because the exchange rate was slightly different. Ah, yes, of course. Yeah, no, that makes uh, that makes perfect sense. I carry on. So I know it's this one here. This is uh, your Supernatural Forty Four. This is from the publisher, and that was what the publisher put on. It says page seventy four, badly printed. Mm. <laughs> so. That would have been like a proof one that the publisher they went through and they found out that that was badly printed yeah. and that message possibly would have gone back to the printers yeah. and said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull, pull your socks up, yeah. pull your socks up," sort of thing. Yeah, angry phone call. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, seeing these in such nice condition, it really, really does. 
you know highlight how good the artwork was you can't always appreciate it when yeah. you know you see see the books a bit low grade you know and something like that with its black cover very difficult to find in, in high grade i would imagine but these are terrific supernatural flame goddess strange weird eerie well that sort of sums up badger in a in a nutshell there doesn't it i mean often as you know jules with mm. a collection you start with a core you know if you're lucky and you hit a yeah a, a little you know cache of them you start with a core and then you add to that mm -hmm. and you try to add with the same quality you know you try to try, say well, yeah. this is the standard and i'm just going to try now just to fill in the gaps because i didn't I didn't, you know, I didn't get them all in one hit. I mean, no, it no. Process of a, Didn't it over well, decades. Yeah, yeah. probably yeah. twenty years. Yeah. Yeah. Just filling in ones when I when I found them. Well, it is a very high quality. That that is for sure. Um, you know, it certainly puts a lot of mind to shame. But I have to sometimes. You know, I might have a slightly lower grade book in my collection, but I remember where I got it, and um, yeah. you know, I've just got that little memory. I was a trip to Tavistock Market yeah. or something like that, and I came across a badger book. That was the most memorable thing that happened that day. <laughs> <laughs> was finding a badger. Book. That's sometimes how I look at these things, you know. Um, but seeing them like this is just a delight. I mean, it really, really is. They're just I did see so a complete run that yeah. came up at a, a local auction a number of years ago, mm -hmm. and they were in lovely condition. There was a complete run of the Supernatural, yeah. but there was one problem with them. They all had sticky sellotape on the spines. Oh, no. They, what, so they just somebody, put tape up right along the spines? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And oh, no. I remember Ted Tubb, the, the science fiction the author, writer, yeah. the author, saying to me once, that when sellotape was first a big thing in mm. the sort of late thirties, early forties or whatever it was, he said all the all the fans used to go and buy sellotape and just go hell for leather with their book and pulp collection. <laughs> and he said as soon as you did it, they looked wonderful. Yeah. You know, the day after you put sellotape on the spines, they yeah. looked lovely. But nobody really thought it through long, in long term. fifteen years' yeah. time that it'll be sticking together and it'll go brown horrible, and horrible yeah. and sticky and oh, no. even today if you find really old tape, often it just flakes off in your hand. It does. But it always leaves a mark. Yeah, it just leaves that brown crusty stain, residue, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. You see it on, on old toy boxes, for yes. example, you see it yes. quite often. Um, you know, fifty, forty, fifty years later. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. Really nice bright one. Books don't mix. No, they don't indeed. <laughs> I just say that's so yeah. vibrant, yeah. that one. Oh, it's terrific. And quite good detail for that as well. It's like it's, this is a Fox one now, so they're a recognisable artist. But yeah. it's like this period, um, you know, he was really on his game. It went off a little bit towards the end, I think, possibly. Yes. Um, yes. With, uh, well, we've seen it with some of the, the romancy ones and that. But these are just great. It's got an element of a gothic. It's only missing the the damsel there running yes. away with. It's actually it's still got the light on as well. Is it the one odd light uh, in in the mansion there? And there's lots of oranges and blues. I'm yeah. wondering if the artist realised that with the yellow livery, that was almost part of the look. That sort of, it's like an identity. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. The sort of brown graveyard, red sky. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just uh, they are. Very lovely indeed. Yeah, these are the fox ones now. They're quite they're not formulaic, but they're quite regular. Like you mm. say, a regular identity. They probably took him an afternoon. Yeah, they won a day, I mean, sort of thing. Yeah, <laughs> ridiculous. But we, you know, having spoken to the artists over the years, they time was very much a constraint. Right, time was. Money. It was that was what was, was expected of them that it was an afternoon's job. You yeah, turned it down, you got paid an afternoon's wage. Yeah, not a week's wage. in a bit of western there somehow cross genre it's mm. <laughs> another loss maybe frozen in ice or something there by the look of it they never come back do you ever remember seeing these actually in bookshops I mean, I know you're not that old, in actual fact. Uh, yeah, I do. Do you do, do vaguely? Yeah. Yeah. You'd, go, you'd sort of scan maybe? the 
science fiction section of a yeah. second hand bookshop, and obviously the yellow spines were very distinctive. E- distinctive, and yeah, yeah you see two or three of them. I, I have to say, when I first started, mm-hmm. you know, hunting books seriously, I, I didn't look at the badges. I was after more literary science fiction. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and other fiction. Well, that's that is what these are not. It's <laughs> yeah, there's no real literary quality here. I'm sure some of them are better than others, um, but they were very popular abroad as well. I know there's an yeah. Australian and New Zealand variant with the variant pricing on them. Yeah. I think everything else about the books are the same. But I do remember on a trip out to Australia seeing them in most of the second-hand bookshops. Right, so yeah. Very popular. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to New Zealand in 1990 for a month. I had a, my grandmother emigrated out there, and we, I, I yeah, basically lived in a, near a fairly big city. And I went into all the second-hand bookshops that were in that city. And they back then they were predominantly hardbacks, mm. and there was a small bit for paperbacks. Mm. And it was all ex-British editions, and the stuff yeah. I was finding. I couldn't believe it. You know, Fleming first, I found over there. First of the African Queen, I, yeah. I remember finding over there, which... Um, yeah. Uh, by F- uh, well, that's pre-internet, isn't it? It was pre-internet. Yeah, 1990, 1990 changed yeah. changed everything. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, I did the same. I was in Australia, but very, very time. similar time, just yeah. before that internet so it kicked in, up. yeah. And then you could find out about any book and find out the price of it. That's book. right. Yeah. yeah, it did change overnight in yeah. actual fact yeah but that trip i never felt i came back with suitcases and filled all my family's mm. suitcases with books um, you know at the time it almost would have paid you to go over to mm. do a book buying trip there was yeah. that much to be found yeah uh, and i almost did i was that tempted but there you go that's a great one never seen that before number 75 the timeless ones Yeah, this is, uh, as eye candy goes, this is amongst the very greatest, isn't it, for uh, vintage paper of its sort, of its style. You know, mm. it's very much of its style. And uh, how often, whenever, are you going to get the chance to uh, see so many in one place? And uh, I'm so glad we're recording these for posterity, but this is fantastic. Right, I think I just need to pause there and make a little bit more room. Okay, then, so carrying on with that Supernatural 81 here. And these are sort of the, to, coming towards the tail end of the run now, aren't they? And um, mm. they don't mention by monthly, but do you think it was you know one a month or one every other month? Something. Yeah, like that? I mean he was publishing quite a lot of other lines at this time, isn't it? The westerns and the... yeah, all being published now, this, simultaneously. Actually, what you're holding there is yeah. one of the variants. Is it an Australian? It's an Australian, yeah. yeah. So they've just overprinted the British price with a black square. Ah, uh, yes. So the British price would have been there, that little yeah. bar. And they popped that on. Just Not even popped a sticker on or anything. Yeah. No, just taken those covers, overprinted them, and so that would have been destined for export mm. from the UK. These all, you can tell they're later ones because they have that sidebar mm. where which leaves the artwork actually untouched. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, nice. Actually, that's really nice, nice like that. Yeah, that's good as well with the panels like that. Mm. We're now sort of well into the 60s. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is They've still got that early 50s feel, but yeah. they are actually 1960s. Yeah, this is number 87 I'm holding now. This one is not dated. Sometimes They are towards the end, aren't they? You can see when they're out, but definitely definitely 60s. Um, so this is Supernatural 87. We've got our... Yeah, 1967 was the final one. 109. Right. The Supernatural was 1967. And isn't there one of these missing towards the end of the run? Yes. 106... Uh, sorry, 108 was never was published. Never issued, yeah. Never issued. Okay. It skips from 7 to 9. That's a beautiful copy of, once again, a tough one I would imagine to find. Yeah, with its not black easy. cover. Um, yeah, mine's certainly not in that shape. <laughs> There's one that needs upgrading. <laughs> well, this one here. Yeah, yeah, just a t- just a tiny bit letting you down, letting the side down, yeah. but not much. It's still uh, still acceptable in my my eyes there. So move them to one side. Chaos Thornton Bell. Walking Shadow, The Exorcist, that's a nice 
So striking, isn't it? That one. That one is another one that looks like it's one of your proof ones with like a slightly looser, mm. looser cover on it. Absolutely mint. Look at it. Oh, beautiful. Such nice copies. Well, that's good as well. Looking in the uh, in the mirror, bitter reflection. The triple man. Strange, weird, and eerie. I think that's what we're going to call this video. <laughs> <laughs> Spectre of Darkness. You'd think that some of these later ones would be easy to get hold of, but I don't think that's the case. It's just no. maybe some sell better than others, maybe. I, yeah, I, I wonder if they were starting not to sell as well yeah. towards the end. Yeah, you're People right. were becoming more discerning. There was more choice, of course. Yeah. You know, when you yeah. think of the mid-50s, what... There was, of course, there was a lot around, wasn't there? You know, yeah. but, but by the time you get into the 60s, a lot of American science fiction was being published by UK publishers. So there's yeah. a lot of competition. Number 100 there. I think in the 50s, especially the early 50s, you picked up whatever you could find to read. Right, you know? right. Because they just, yeah, just wanted to read it. You just yeah. wanted to read anything. I mean, but people mummy kind of one. just had been more discerning. Yeah, well, it doesn't hurt, does it? But yeah, like you say, probably... Uh, hurt Badger a little bit. Yeah. People were looking for better quality and there was better out there. I don't recognise this one. Yeah, this is real tail end because the Badger book's logo is actually in the shape of the Badger. That's the very final one, I think. Before they... Uh, Again, I think those are Australian... Clamps. Oh yeah, that's that one's New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. NZ, that one, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, interesting to look out for those. For the ultra completists. It says 107, and we know there's no 108. And then that was the very final one, mm. 109, which has even got a decimal price. It might have even been remainded come the very end. I think that's what it was. I think they were being sold many years after. Yeah. Well, so, so 67 to 71 was decimalisation. Yeah. It? So four years later, they were still in stock, and uh, yeah, the last, last of the uh, last of the the Badger Supernatural. Now you did bring this in, which is really great because I love this sort of stuff. So let's make a little bit of room. But this is a Badger books, well, order form. This would have been. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was sent to a rep, uh, sent to a bookshop, or yeah, given out by yeah. a, a Badger rep, or they probably represented several publishers, and uh, yeah, they might have gone round to the bookshop. So these are the six new ones. How many do you want? Um, there they all are there. And then um, a little bit of backlist listed as well. Mm. Instead of all those war ones. So it's quite early on this, isn't it? And thrillers. And in fact, supernatural stories only up to number 12 on this list. So it is quite quite early on in uh, the jo more John Spencer. Than do you know, I think in was. terms of popular fiction jewels, mm. the, the war genre was huge in, Absolutely. The, in, the, yeah. in the 50s, especially yeah. obviously with soldiers returning to to city street you know yeah. they've been in the forces during the war yeah and what they were reading was you know stories. Ref, sort of reflected that yeah yeah and because there were certainly the, the the world war series was certainly a lot longer there were more books published than, right than any right. of the other series oh, really? yeah and um yeah i think they were more popular so yeah yeah it says a lot of, um, you know other publishers who we do we are more familiar with people like pan look at all the war related books yes. they published there was yes. loads so they're like any decent definitely. publisher you publish for your market i suppose yes. don't you and uh, absolutely they, they definitely did okay so we're moving on to the science fiction ones now and uh this is we believe it says science fiction series number one on the spine and we believe this very much is science fiction number one not the not the science series number one, which we'll see a little bit later on. And we'll work our way through this. Now, number two wasn't issued, was it? That was never issued. No, number two was never issued. So now we're on to number three here. And we're back to uh, the mid-1950s again now. These just reek, don't they? They reek of uh, classic sort of... Uh, Science fiction B movies, that's what they remind me of. Yeah, you know? I suppose one of the differences for me between this series and the supernatural is how few human beings or even creatures appeared on the early ones. It mm. is just rockets. Yeah. Planets, you know, ray guns, but it's the, there's no 
aliens or people until we get later in the series. Certainly with these first few, they're very much just spaceships, isn't it? Yeah, Rockets. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's number six. That's number seven. Now, there was no number eight, is that right? That's correct. Uh, no number eight, and then we're straight on. So it's number seven, then straight on to number nine. Return to space. Of course, if you were collecting these at the time, by number, that potentially could have driven you around the twist, couldn't it? <laughs> yes. It's not I've been looking for that for, for decades. You'd read it on your wants list <laughs> yeah. for a long, long time. Literally forever, you know, yeah. Um, certainly, thank goodness, you know. You wonder why the publisher didn't go and publish one and, and yeah. put the previous number Just on it. Just to fill the number in. Well, out, Penguin yeah. did do that. Did Whereas they? Pan never went back and used their no. old numbers, you know. No. Um, I think there's some missing digits as well they don't know mm. of. Um, you know, like you say, they should have just used them all up, but um, who can tell, eh? Oh, look, Twilight Zone. <laughs> oh, Destination Moon, look at that. Nothing to do with uh, Tintin. I wonder if that had come out before Tintin's story mm. or not. Oh, that's a difficult one to know, isn't it? One for the fans. Well, that's nice, actually, isn't it? With the uh, London scene going mm. over Tower Bridge there. That's excellent. No dawn and no horizon. So once again, a lot of these are by uh, our friend Mr. Van Thorpe, aren't they? A lot of them. Yes, yes. There's one actually under his own name there. Yeah. Hyperspace. Hardly any of these early ones. You just don't see them very often, do you? But the other author who did a lot of work, obviously, for Badger, was John Glasby. Right. Who, uh, who did both supernatural and science fiction. And and a lot of the Westerns, I believe, oh, as well. Oh, right. Yeah. This is a great one. Look at that. Dawn of the Mutants. Unusual colours for Badger as well, isn't it? Yes. That one? Yes. Yeah. That's uh, really nice, that one. Dark Millennium. Baseborn. Of course, Chetwin Hayes. There we are. Quite a, a, quite a collectible author, that. Uh, and this one is, is a, a, an expensive book, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've put up with that copy for a while now. Just, yeah. Because it's, it's so scarce. Yeah. yeah. It's the first one I've ever held, shall we say. <laughs> Absolutely super rare, that. Collectible author, look at that, Fiends, another great one. That looks like a lovely, beautiful file copy. Time Echo. Other Side of Night. Doomed World. That's great, isn't it? That one. That's a really, really great cover. I think Jules as well. Badger mm. books are starting to almost reflect a collecting interest in what how can I call them? B movie books. Yeah. Not, not books about B movies, but the, the, the books like The Crabs we were talking yeah. about earlier, and some of those yeah. books fetching huge money now. Where you have these outlandish stories that are not actually written very well at no, all. No, you wouldn't want to sit down and, and really enjoy that's them. That's become a whole collecting genre yeah. all in itself. And I'm wondering if the Badger books, as a group, are starting to be collected for like that, that. Yeah. that in mind. Although the one you're on at the moment, Angus Badger, is a, a pretty mainstream science fiction novel. Oh, right, right, okay. You know, and uh, a very good novel. Yeah, they weren't all duff. No, they've Any started means. to bring in some titles, and there's another one from yeah. America. And also some of the cover art um, was borrowed from Ace Books. Yes. Um, so it became a mishmash of British and American um, publishing. Mm. That definitely keeps it interesting. It's a nice jacket. <laughs> the robot there. <laughs> but that wouldn't be out of place in something like Star Wars now. You know, the, the way that they design yes, their robots right. sort, of, sort of piecemeal, as it were. So, so there's 
example, of course, isn't it? That. Yes, and I think that cover was used on the Ace Double. Yeah. Um, so they were they were making the most of uh, the American influence in science fiction and the growth in American science fiction. Yeah, science absolutely. Science. So, I mean, we both keep a sort of an eye out of what, when these come online, don't we, on eBay, and uh, they just don't tend to be in the condition anymore, do they? Um, no. And certain ones, the earlier ones in particular, just don't seem to turn up at all. Not in my experience. Or if they do, someone's put a stupid, absolutely stupid price on mm. them. But when the condition isn't there. Um, but. I mean, for a long while, certainly the you know, you go to the London paperback show mm. in, you know, only a few years ago, and you could pick them up for six, seven, eight quid, you know, in yeah. their shape, because um, that's where they tended to turn up. Yeah. Um, but at the last show, I didn't notice that many. No, right? and I think I did see a few, but I didn't buy any. Um, they were probably too, too low grade for me. Mm. Yeah, so, so nice to see them in this, uh, right, another great one there. Reminds me a bit of uh, Land of the Giants. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Okay, so carrying on there, we got Hand of Doom. It reminds me of the Doctor Who story, Hand of Death, which is a classic Tom Baker. In fact, the hand in that was sort of blue as well. Um, yeah, nice busy cover, which is, I always like that with this stuff going on in the background, and there's a lot going on there. That almost looks like it could have been. It's too good for a badger. It might have been pinched from an ace. Possibly. Yes, it may well have done. Yeah, that's one I know because this is one of the very first badgers I ever got. I thought, cool, this looks interesting. <laughs> head, head in a head in a fish bowl or something there. You did know? you read I it? No, I, I, I don't think I did actually. <laughs> Not that I remember. <laughs> no. Mind makers. A bit of a Davros look to him, right? He has got a bit of a Davros, well, the brain of Morbius. Yeah. Um, 12 to the Moon, I've seen that one before. Novelization by Robert Wise. Mm. Now, could that be the director, Robert Wise? Yeah, I think, Do you think, I think it is? that's yeah. a movie tie in. All oh, right, that would be, one. yeah. Of course, Robert Wise went on to direct Star Trek The Motion Picture, uh, but his biggest hit was The Sound of Music. He directed oh, yes. The Sound of Music, which is a huge film, of course. Um, Crimson Planet. That's a bit of a change of look, isn't it, for mm. uh, for Badger there? It is. Alien. Not Ridley Scott's Alien, but uh, or the Badger Alien. Should we say A Van Vogt's Alien? Oh, we could do, yeah. That's well, the original <laughs> origin, <laughs> yeah. Venus Venture. Oh, Forbidden Planet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, once again, a few years after the, the 50s Forbidden Planet, of course, yeah. isn't it, this one? <laughs> How did they get away with it? Night of the Black Horror. The That's Planet. another one that is very sought after. Really, I think, in the yeah. Run. Yeah, it's almost Lovecraftian. Right, uh, that um, explains it a bit. It's got yeah. those sort of Lovecraftian touches to it. Yeah. Um, so it... it it's Hence very, the attraction, yeah. Very uh, collectible. That's one. great. Age of Eternity. Let's slide them over there. That's nice, isn't it? Perilous Galaxy. He was a conscript astronaut, a galley slave of space. Oh dear. Uranium 235. Well, Steve would like that one. He loves books, science fiction books with dinosaurs on the front. That's his pet pet thing. That so, uh, I'm sure he'll let uh, mention that one. Could be the only one. badger he'll ever want. Yeah, could will be actually. <laughs> yeah, that's, he loves yeah. that. Actually, uh, our friend Steve couldn't be with us today, but hopefully mm. next time. Uh, Orbit One, John Muller. Yes, excellent stuff.
they landed to find the world they had known a smoking ruin. I do love the cover blurb sometimes there. The more fantastic it is, the better. You know, a lot of those early pans have got cover blurb, haven't they? Mm. Um, not usually uh, related to the book often. The day the world died. Next machine. God, it's such a great collection. It's so comprehensive. I've seen so many in one hit. We're spoiling the viewers today, Bob, I tell you. <laughs> But I know the the, the uh, badges are so popular um, on the channel. People really love them. So I uh, didn't want to miss this opportunity. Mm. A faceless planet. And of course, there is a new one out from PS Publishing. Mm. Didn't they do a Lionel Thandor. They have, yeah. Badger recently. They have indeed. In, in like a yellow years. library as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They did, yeah. It's only about a year ago. Keeping, I think. The, uh, keeping, the, keeping the badges it alive. alive. Yeah, somehow. And they do produce really lovely books, Pierre. Absolutely, yeah. I've been really impressed with them. Uh, we were talking earlier, weren't we, about really the Really important Cole. little independent British publisher, I think, aren't they? Absolutely. Really important. Yeah, the, the, the one on Weird Tales is my next read from them. Mm. So here's number 50, numbered number 50 in the science fiction run. Day of the Beasts. Now, I know we're coming up to the book of books, really. One of the most, probably the most famous Badger book of all. Although these are all so grey, aren't they? Really nice, bright, vibrant cover, that one. Never seen that before. That's really, I really like that one. Well, the publishers realised, I think, that to a lot of readers, what sold the book in the book stand or the news agent or wherever they were was the cover. Yeah. It? You know, that... Absolutely. You're getting a flavour from the cover of what you're going to get. You need some, uh, need some decent packaging on them to uh, tempt people in. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was all about. That's right. Well, here we are. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Rodent mutation. Yeah. So, for the camera then, so, so we got this story on record. When you went to the publisher and the books really hadn't been kept in the greatest of condition, didn't you say to me that there was another copy of Rodent Mutation? There was Mutation? another copy of Rodent Mutation. And yes. the ironic thing was... It, 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 it had suffered at the hands <laughs> of a rodent. Of actual rodents, yes. The, the, the corner was chewed. And, right. Uh, um, having cats for many, many years, I yeah. do know what, what mice like. do to books. Yeah. I've seen it before, in my, <laughs> unfortunately, in my own collection. Oh, no. Um, so I, I do know that that was genuinely a book that had been <laughs> gnawed by us. You couldn't make it I up. I happily passed it on to someone with that. Yeah, I bet. And they were happy to have it. Yeah, well, I, I, I haven't got it. I haven't got it. And in fact, um, I do kick myself because when I, maybe five years ago, one came up on eBay and it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't as nice as this. It was really a bit rough around the edges, but it was about £45, which mm. on reflection now, a similar copy would be going for about 100 which is what the last one went for. So one in your nice condition, I mean, even that isn't mint, but it's darn near near it. Um, it's probably a 150 plus book now. Mm. I, w I wouldn't hesitate to put that mm. on if it was mine. Maybe more, you can tell. Mm. But yeah, a real, real key one in the uh, the Badger. The mm. Badger story there, followed by The Ultimate Man. And then number 75 there, Night of the Big Fire. In the beginning. Space Fury. Walk through tomorrow. The man from 1963 says, so probably when this one got published, stood poised on the brink of 3063. And roll Atomic Nemesis. Zero minus X. Okay. Right then, so we're on to science fiction number 91 now, the last little run of these uh, through the bar. So these are pretty much what, uh, 63 to 65, this, this, mm. this, this little run. And 
So again, going up the uh, up the spine there, so you get to see the full cover artwork, which is really nice. Power spear. Special mission. So what did Lionel Fanthorpe do after Badger sort of hung up their gloves, as it were? Well, I know that one of the things he did was wrote a series of books um, and tables, some mm -hmm. mathematical tables, all to do with decimalisation oh, and a crossover right. into decimalisation. Wow. Huh. Um, but I'm not sure what, <laughs> what well, he, did. he did. I mean, he, he did go on to 14 times, I seem to yes. remember. And he was on TV for a while, wasn't he? Yes. The Motorcycling Reverend. He was. Um, and well, I've, evidently he's still around now because he did that book for, like you say, PS Publishing, mm. um, which was uh, good to see. So he's still writing. And of course, the famous thing was he would just record these, wouldn't he, into like a little tape recorder or reel to reel, and then they were transcribed, I think. Correct, as, uh, yes. How he did them, yeah. yes. I think it was his wife, wasn't it? Well, she did the transcription. She, yeah. she did the, all the typing for you. <laughs> Blimey. And it was almost like a one take. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no redraft. <laughs> oh, hilarious. You just can't believe it in this day and age, but that was how he uh, kept to the deadlines, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. This is so much fun. Yeah, I brilliant. Mean, as long as you read them with the, the fun head on rather yeah. than the series head on, then I think they're very entertaining. Yeah, that's good. I like that with the, the different heads. Excellent stuff. This is number 110, Force 97X. I think if you do go online. These very telling ones are the ones you tend to see quite often. Yes. But not in great shape, of course, but they are out there because they were the last few. Um, at least of these they seem to be, because I recognise quite a few of these. Uh, that's an Australian version there. I see six shillings Australia underneath. Mm. One one seven. And there's one one eight. I don't recognise either of those two, but that was the last two in the science fiction run. Okay, so something completely different now, and I don't have any of these. And also a Cobra book, which is one of their slightly weird, very short-lived like imprints, really. But mm. this is a Cobra books bits mystery series number one. There, White Lightning. Pel Toro again. So our friend. Uh, I suppose, in a way, imitating the sort of gangster paperbacks that were so popular in the 50s. Absolutely. White Lightning was dangerous wherever it struck, and the storm broke in Chicago. White Lightning, what could they be referring to? I wonder. So this is Mystery Series number two. And instantly it's changed to Badger again, so Cobra was just for the first number. A gunman close behind. Michael Landry. And number five here, mystery number five, the wreath for a lady, Max Baroni. <laughs> One of today's foremost American writers. Never heard of him, actually. I don't know about yourself there. <laughs> um, now, this is uh, this says crime series number two. So this is a separate series again. Now. Mm. Murder Be My Mistress. And then crime series number... Three, the long silence. Number four, the tight corner. These are more familiar badger looking books now. Aren't One or two of these, I think, are pseudonyms that might actually be signed in some. Oh, right, oh, okay. It's either that one or. Um, I know that maybe not that one. Sid Bounds did a number of these, and also really? Ted Tubb. Yeah. Um, and they were, they were 
some of these were actually reissues under different names and different titles. Uh -huh. You know, a book that had been published by uh, John Spencer many, many mm. years before. I see. Yeah. And, uh, well, recognise the great holiday. Yeah. Oh. That one, the Wanton Hour. Lewis Clay. Robert Turner, that's a gorgeous one, that the Actually, tobacco auction. Yes, yeah, yes, a lovely cover. Yeah, wow. That is a beauty. What a lovely cover. I think it's the big frame I'm thinking about, was that? I think the, that's a sit bound. So all right, the big frame. Oh, yeah, it is in that, indeed, yes. So let's slide those over there a moment. Yes, yeah, so another great, great jacket on that one. So J.K. Baxter. There we are, look, a.k.a. Sidebounds. There we are. Mm. This is one that he wrote himself. He said did a lot of writing for other periodicals at the time, you yeah. know, some of the picture library things and uh, all sorts of... He was one of those sort of jobbing writers. Jobbing writer, yeah, absolutely. Pretty sure that's an easy tub. Another great jacket. Of course, you met. Yeah, there we are. That EC tub. There is. You met all these um, these authors well, in the in the nineties, eighties, yes. nineties. Yeah, in the late eighties, nineties. They used to come to the London show, and yeah, very nice to see them there. Sign books for people, and yeah, it was, it was a fun time. Yeah, Rackets Incorporated. Savageness number eleven. Oh, the corrupt ones. Yeah, I think these are much harder to come across they than are. the science fiction or definitely. supernatural. Yes. I haven't got a single one of this prime no, series. They are never they are ever come across them. Uh, very scarce. Yeah, number thirteen. Now I notice you don't collect the war ones and the spy ones, do you? Or the westerns? No. Know? Yeah. No, I mean I did have you a lot of the them line at some stage, but you, Well, I bought some off you, haven't I? Yeah. Um, over and there. the nurse romance is the other series. Oh, um, yeah, nurse romance. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, it's just these I have kept. Can't keep them all. <laughs> no. And this last little lot. So these are science series. This is mm. science series number one. So these are actual factual. Factual, a base, yeah, fact based one. I think yeah. so. And that this was obviously a far one again because it says faulty copy on the front. So this mm -hmm. would have come from the publisher. Yeah, maybe slightly miscut or something like that. Mm. Um, let's see. That's science series number two. Survival in the sky. Once again, I, I never really come across these. It's a nice one. The unidentified. It's on UFOs. What happened to the investigators found out where flying sources came from? I guess they were bumped off, weren't they? That's what they're trying to suggest. <laughs> or taken up to the mothership. That's what it was, yeah. That's it. They were beamed up, yeah. Uh, Project Mars. A master blueprint for man's first exploration trip to Mars. That's actually, it's actually got some illustrations in. Look at that. It's almost like a pelican in its content. Look at that. I mean, I shouldn't think that those sold in anything like the same numbers as... 1961. The, the fiction titles. That's really nice. And this final one here is Futuristic Science Series. This is number 16, like, like an odd example yeah, of that's that just particular series. Yeah. One, that series started in the early 50s and um, was very much kind John of Spencer, pulpy, yeah. pulpy era. And that, that's one of the final ones. Might even be the final one. Yeah, it's like a transition from the digest to the book, isn't it? It's yes. the middling period. Yes, and very much in the in the bad delivery. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, really fantastic. Well, there we well, go. Yeah. What a fantastic collection. Thank you very much for allowing me to have a look through those, Bob. It's, it's a uh, pleasure. Oh, it's just fantastic, isn't it? I could spend uh, hours with these. Uh, they're just <laughs> superb. And I hope you have enjoyed it at home. If you have, uh, do please give the video a thumbs up do please hit the subscribe button if you've not already for regular vintage vintage paperback content and i'll look forward to seeing you again very soon bye